move things forward. You know, we have uh, our own mapping system in our office uh, that we use and uh, work with. And, uh, and, um, and you can tell, we have uh, here like a place name list and that gives you all the information on that map there. But in the old days when Randy Bouchard and Dorothy Kennedy came, this is what it looked like. So we've really moved forward in, in this uh, archaeology here. And uh, so I got it into archaeology back in the 90s, and it, and, uh, it was like a, uh, like a awakening call for me, you know, like uh, after, it's really hard to describe, like uh, back then there was uh, a lot of cultural sites were being destroyed, and, and when I took it back uh, to court in, uh, from the Euro Creek a roadblock area, then it's because when the judge said I didn't have any uh, photos of uh, picture grass that got blown up there, then that's you know that's the reason why I stopped for to uh, do this, and, uh, and it's you know keeping me busy. And the uh, tribe says they need uh, ten more people like me to get out there and do field work and record and document. And uh, we did one um, one archaeology dig, and uh, and the dig there you know, like a uh, we carbon dated uh, some, uh, what do you call, a fire pit underneath the ground and it turned out to be 2,570 years old and that was at the Bailey Bridge, the causeway uh, at the Birkenhead there. Um, they had to, uh, they had to call us in to do our dig there before they were able to build the bridge and that's, uh, that's uh, the way it is nowadays. Uh, after Delgamuth uh, came in, you know, changed everything, even forestry for referrals go to the office there and mining, IPPs, you know, everything and then logging. And every logging block I have to go and take a look at and now they have maps with falling quarries and I have to go and, you know, go inside that block and look around and if there's any cultural sites like a house pit. A house pit is like uh, the old style of living of our people. Yeah. And today you only could uh, see the depressions of the house pits and there's quite a few around the valley here and, uh, and uh, yeah, I've been uh, recording, documenting them. Now we're doing 3D uh, surveying on them and you know, uh, putting them on maps or, so that's pretty good. And um, culture modified trees is, uh, is a cedar tree that our people used for the inner bark. Like this stuff here, this, this is the inner bark of the cedar tree. Our people took big slabs off and uh, they put them over the frame before they put the dirt on in, uh, in the house pits in the old days and th that was a lot of work but uh, those are rectangulars and there's uh, taper strips nowadays people use and uh, they take the inner barks and, uh, and this is some of the products that come out of it and uh, you can have a look later. And the cedar tree is uh, very important to us, uh, our people, is, it's like uh, we use the roots of the cedar tree, and that's what the baskets are made out of. And the color are from the wild cherry bark, and we bury this in the ground, and uh, that's uh, one of the ways we make it uh, the brown to black there, to bury for like six months or longer, depending. <coughs> and today, uh, we have a lot of new recorded sites. You can see all, you can come take a look at the map later, and, you can see they're cluttered all over the valley there, and, and so, you know, there's just like tons of stuff there that we do in archaeology, and, and on the table there we have the whole, whole bunch of stuff there. <coughs> but this is the DC map there, and we, we and within our whole territory we dirted it out there, so every time we find something we make sure it's all recorded, marked on properly, and sent to the art branch, and uh, that's uh, one of the stuff. And, I've also worked with the UBC students, and we made a regional map, and we did like this uh, 30, uh, 32 maps here of the whole valley here, and tells you everything what you know that's uh, happening here. And it even talks. We even talked about the slide in here a long time ago, and this was done back in 2002. I've been like uh, totally busy in, in in the field and. That's my job is to do the field work and uh, Lex Joseph, he does all the research in the office there and I'm hardly in the office so.
Was the was the Birkenhead Bailey Bridge, was that one of the first major archaeological digs that you guys took on? or uh, been... That was the only dig we have here in, uh, in our territory so far. And uh, I've been trying to get the UBC and, uh, to do more studies so we can get more reports and more dates, right, you know. And uh, yeah, that's the only, only dig we've done here so far with uh, dates. And yeah. uh, I'm working with another doctor, Brian Gordon, from Ottawa there and from uh, Civilization of Manor. And uh, we're, what we're doing is in rock paintings like this, uh, I don't have the material. So there's a hummingbird rock painting, and we're scraping on the ground underneath there, and we're like layer by layer, and we're, we're putting glue and paper and, and getting you know, like layers of it. And every every layer we get, and we just line them up and, and we're going to carbon date those dates, and those are finally getting sent down to Florida to get dated. So there is like a, a few sheets that have a uh, what do you call that? The ochre that's in the ground there. So those will be dated. So that'll be our first first time we'll be ever dating a rock painting in, in this uh, country in Canada and British Columbia here. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I like that. Yeah. Uh, this one was like at uh, Walkerville. You know where Reed Road turn off is. Uh -huh. There was two of them there, and uh, I used to play in them. Uh, back in 69, I used to go in there, climb up and down the ladders as a young boy. And yeah. when I went home and told my dad that, and he, and, uh, he kind of uh, told me not to do that anymore. Yeah. And I looked at him, I was only in oil, and he told me why, you know, he said, oh, or that, that was the old clan. And uh, he said the, the people in there died from the smallpox, so oh, they had to leave yeah. them abandoned. Uh -huh. And uh, when they took them down, this, they took the two of them down and they shipped them away. And uh, there's like big bowls, you know, all kinds of artifacts there, you know, were all taken away too at that time. And I've been looking and searching for them yet. Isn't there another one near the Birkenhead Bridge there though? There's, uh, well, nowadays there's just all the depressions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just okay. all the depressions on both sides of the, the bridge there. Uh -huh. And uh, but people are starting to rebuild them now. Like you go uh -huh. to Lawlett, uh, Fountain, Pavilion, uh -huh. uh -huh. or to Lytton, you know, the, and you know they're starting to rebuild them again. Uh -huh. Yeah, cultural so, depressions we call them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've brought like a, a lot of UBC students, teachers to all these mm -hmm. uh, depressions and and uh, show them, and because it's uh, interesting. Yes. Where are the rock paintings? Are those along a little bit late? Uh, <clears throat> these, uh, this bear and uh, the days, these two are at uh, Sioux Valley, and this one's at Green Lake. These two are at Green Lake, and this one's at uh, bottom one there, that's uh, in the Upper Lowell River there, mm -hmm. uh, just past McKenzie there. And uh, this is on Lowell Lake, and this is at the mouth of the Birkenhead River, these two. Are they on the opposite side to the road, Lowell Lake? Uh, yeah, 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 they're kind of hard to get to, uh, yeah, by boat. Uh, but if you go up the new site to the Montclair new site, you cross the bridge here and there's a hummingbird just uh, to the left of it there. Okay. And that's where we did our sample testing there. Very good. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we've documented all that there. And, and these two are the rock carvings, you know, and uh, this is the first time our people ever uh, Located uh, rock carvings in our territory too, and yeah. people said, uh, "Oh no, there's none there." Even our art brand said there's nothing around here. But you know, we knew it already. And uh, like when I was a, a kid, uh, I used to walk by them all the time. There, never bothered them. I used to go around yeah. in there, and then finally, when somebody started riding their mountain bikes around and over them, and he sat there and he was waiting for his girlfriend to come down, and he seen a face looking at him. So I kind of freaked them out. He didn't tell anybody for yeah. a while, but we knew they were there. So, but uh, yeah. Where are they? Pardon? Where are those two that are? Uh, they're just you know uh, up in a hill over here, behind uh, just below uh, Mosquito Lake. Okay. You yeah. take one of the trails down Cree Puff, and you, you can't miss it. Okay. Yeah, I bring elders over there too. I even bring our own elders there too because Excellent. some of them uh, don't don't know where it is, and you want to know, and you know it's like yeah. a lot of our elders like went to boarding school and they got. 
lost your culture, culture yeah. and so I'm, I'm lucky to hold on to, to it there. Yeah. Tell us about uh, the, uh, the bowl that was found on Signal Hill. Uh, yeah, I can. Uh, there was a, like a pumice bowl, but it's a different shape here, but it's a, a twin fish head bowl. And uh, back in, I think it was back in 71, I was walking on uh, the stretcher one day there, and uh, an elder guy is trying to give me this bowl. And I was, you know, after my dad told me about the smallpox, so I kind of stepped back and I said, no, no, just uh, do something else with it. And, and he didn't know what to do with it, so I, I said, well, I'll put it in the museum, you know, maybe we'll get it later. And so it's in the Vancouver Museum there, and uh, it's a twin fish head bowl. And that re represents uh, the Salmon Brothers uh, that trained way at the headwaters uh, of the Lowell River there. They trained there for four years, and as they came down, they, they started putting the names as they, they came down and their stories. And, there, and they went right down to the ocean and they came back there. And those were the salmon brothers. And, those, and that was a salmon, uh, a twin salmon fish bowl that was found there. That's what it represents, yeah. And that was one of the first significant finds in the archaeology world in the Pemberton area, wasn't it? That was one of them there. Uh, James Tate found one bowl down the mouth of uh, the Lollet Lake there. And there was another bowl there. Like, Great part of the Leeward Place is there. Yeah, that was like uh, 1906 or something like that. Yeah. And then I was wondering if you could tell us about um, the story that was in, I think it was the Whistler magazine, about uh, the site just south of Whistler that was a really old site. Are you talking about the Rubble Creek? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, a lot of my travels and stories have, like, uh, when my dad was still alive, uh, I, used, like, I used to drive him anywhere he wanted to go. Then uh, I was always interested in the village site uh, that I've heard of uh, at Rubble Creek there. So we went driving down that way, and he stopped me, and he, he you know, showed me the borderline, and he said, well, just up here, there's an old village site there, and that's where all our people are, the wolf pan is, uh, covered from the rubble, rubble there and uh, so from there you know I knew knew uh, that they were there so there was a lot of other stuff there so when they dropped Daisy Lake Dam down for us to walk around the beach there you know I found a big spearhead in there and like about 10 feet under the you know like when the water dropped there just you know so that's what I found there and uh, stories just kept coming coming and uh, then he started telling me about the black tusk there, and, and a few of our families know about black tusk. There. It's uh, Kin Kanat, is uh, that's where the thunder the thunder rests there. And uh, John Sky from here, he he was a medicine man. He used to spend a lot of his time there. And and, and uh, my dad said, this is our borderline here, you know. And then he, you know they kind of describe like all the mountain areas. So you, you cannot move the mountains; they're always there. No, that's our borderline there for our traditional territory between the Squamish and Leewat. And uh, one year I was, uh, I don't know, hanging around there, I guess, there, and then all of a sudden people are, you know, came there and said, we found a skull here. And I looked at them and I didn't believe them, so they, so he kind of described the skull as like in a bank there where they're pushing the road up up uh, the rubble there, then the skull came rolling down, and it's one of our old people there. And so we've got that skull, and then first we sent it to the RCMP and our art branch, and it came back, and now we got it in our graveyard. So, like, that's like evidence of our people that have been buried there. That, that was a while back, it was back in like around 83 or something like that when we got it back. So that's a whole slide area, and uh, there was a village then that was that used to be there that's now under that slide. Yeah, yeah, like uh, some of our Leeward hunters were hunting around there, just above there, when, when the slide came down there, and it was like around 1858, and then when the, when the slide came down, and you know, that's, that's when, the, in that period of time, that's when it happened, yeah. I, uh, 
I wanted to ask you, Johnny, about uh, your work as you kind of look towards the future. Do you see more Johnny Jones? Or, or, is, or is there only going to be one? Well, in our office, like every, I mean, like uh, my boss and, you know, when we travel around to different nations and we talk, talk about to the people and, and, uh, and she, first thing she says when we get there, you know, when she talks, she says, you know, we have one Johnny Jones here, but we need 10 more, you know, to get them out in the whole territory, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, you know, it's, it's, uh, kind of makes me feel good she says that because, you know, we do need more uh, people out there and, uh, and uh, I've been training some younger guys at home there, but they're not really into it. They're, they, they ha they're always, you know, flexing all, doing other stuff, so that's, you know, hopefully we will get more, you know, people involved. I've been doing presentations to the schools, mm -hmm. high schools, Signa Hills, and I've been, you know, uh, encouraging them, telling them, you know, take it up. It's, it's good money to me. Yeah. I noticed in the Stan McRunner that some of the students received grants. Uh, is that just a summer program, maybe? They were talking about university students, I think, and there was a grant from uh, some organization or philanthropic society for archaeological digs, but maybe not here. Well, this is all up in the uh, Lolot area. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and like, Lolot area is study to help. <laughs> Sorry to yeah. say that, but <laughs> it is. And we've only got one study uh, in our area yet. So far, and I have the document here somewhere. I think we did. This is at the Bailey Bridge, and it, you know that's how thick it is there. Because we've pulled out a lot of artifacts out of it, and, and you can have a look at this. There, it's uh, pretty awesome there. How long did that uh, take you, like start to finish, even to this finished product? Months, years? For that uh, that archaeological dig. Oh, it took us like uh, three weeks to do the dig there. Yeah. Then we then everything got sent out, carbon dated, and everything there, and and everything came back in a big report there. Yeah. Yeah, it takes yeah. a while. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the field yeah. work's the easy part, right? I know, <laughs> I know. We're like well, nowadays, we're like we have to three D map our sites now, so it's mm -hmm. different and it's new new technique there, but it's. Something I'm learning too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I learn every day too. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yes. You said something about sending uh, sending them down to the states for carbon dating. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm working with this Dr. Brian Gordon from Ottawa, from Civilization of Man, uh -huh. and he's a retired archaeologist, and he has a friend down in Florida that does all these uh, datings. So, it, you know. It only costs us like six hundred dollars to do that. So I mean, that works out you for mean, us. You mean we, we haven't got enough people in this country that know how to do that? I don't think so. I don't think well, so. We, we need it. We yeah. Need it. Well, that's we'll after it. That's the technology down there. They yeah, have it. Yeah, and we don't. Yeah. It, it makes you wonder, though, doesn't it? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have carbon dating. I think. Uh, uh, University of Victoria had some, but probably not this ochre. That's a yes. That's well, a different thing altogether. That's dust. Well, see all this stuff here. This is all that ochre. I've been collecting it too because my dad uh, uh, kind of described all the paints to me, and, and I, I even sent some of this back with Dr. Gordon to examine to just to match him up there and. Uh, uh -huh. Down in the bottom here, there's a conch, a hemlock conch that our people use for paint too, and that's my, that's one of the first things my dad showed me when. I, and, uh, so I've been using a lot of that stuff there, and it's uh, it's uh, like a learning process. Back, to, it's bringing things back. It's like uh, people are starting to use it. My paws now, and and uh, people ask me how to make it, so I have to describe it and show them, you know, just to do it properly. But uh, the frustrating part is, is some people, when I show them it, they go and sell it, and that's not what you're supposed uh, to do with it. Mm -hmm. it's, that's, that it's a money thing for them, and yeah. for me, it's like a, it's a spiritual mm -hmm. thing. I wanted to get you to tell us what a typical day out in the field looks like for you. Could you talk a little bit about uh, the work you're doing this summer and <coughs> yeah. what your day looks like? Okay, now I'm going to change my... Usually it's hat, but, uh, but this is my vest, and uh, I'll grab uh, okay. 
Okay, this is one of the IPP uh, in the upper Lowell River there. You have uh, some areas, uh, what do you call, uh, drill holes that they want to do. This is the Keel Falls there, and they want to pipe everything down there, so we had to look on both sides. First, we started on this side, and then uh, we found a lot of cultural stuff on the meager side. Mm -hmm. So they jumped over to the other side. Now we have to follow all this, and there's two different routes uh, that they, they want to take. And uh, the bore holes, you want to drill there, we have to do shovel tests in like, the power of the, the dam area and the powerhouse area down here. So uh, we have, uh, like, that's what we're doing right now. And, uh, in the field there, like we're going through a bush and everything there, we're going to have to have our radio. I think that, yeah, it works. Yeah, it works. <laughs> and uh, we got our notes. We have to write our notes all the time. And we used to use, a, you know, we even use a GPS out there. So like a lot of technical stuff that we use. and. Uh, we used to carry the old hips and chains, you know what that was? The old hips and chains and string, you walk and, you know, use a compass, you know, a compass like this. And we just, you know, wherever we go, we just move that and we go to it and we follow the lines there. But nowadays we use uh, range finders. Oh. <laughs> no more, no more hip chain, you know, I'm glad. So things like that, a lot of things change. All for the better. All for the better, yeah. But we still use like tapes and stuff like that because we have to measure out stuff there when we're out. If we, if we find a, like a CMT, we measure from the bottom to the to the first cut and to the top cut there. Then we have another tape uh, that we measure right around the tree, and we measure the lobes there. And you know we don't need to bore the trees unless we have a permit, and that permit has to come right from the art branch. And, that's a lot of, a lot of, yeah. So how do you uh, try to educate people about traditional sites? I know you were telling me about the Frisbee golf site that was set up, and that's in an old village site. Yeah, yeah. And Or things like there's a mountain bike trail that goes over a rock carving. So how do you try to educate people so that there's more awareness of these sites? Well, nowadays, uh, like the bike trail, when, when I first heard the bike trail, I was going right over the, the rock carvings, right over, over that one. You can, you can see logs and stuff there. I put a little barricade there to divert them around, and, and that kind of worked. But now we want to put an information uh, sign there just for people to look at, read, and put a little story with it and, you know, describe what's there. And, and the top one there, like, is uh, a grizzly bear or a black bear head there, and my dad told me that too. And and that in Signa Hill tomorrow, we're going. Uh, we have uh, permission from the art branch to, but we have to fill out forms, and we're gonna dismantle a frisbee course on on the house pit site there tomorrow at uh, one one o'clock. I think we're hitting over there, and uh, so uh, uh, like when. Nowadays, uh, referrals or any type of building structures on Crown land, uh, all those referrals has to go to our office, and there's a procedure and process that, uh, and you know, to do it. Like, for example, like Tanqua Lake, there, uh, that's halted now because uh, that we have to do an AIA up there and do a you know survey up there before they rebuild a new cabin there. In their new location, and that's the procedure from the government. And the First Nations uh, are working together now, and like from the Dalgan decision from the court case, that's what you're supposed to do and uh, follow this process. Uh, because our title of interest is on, still on the line and we still exist. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so that means a lot of busy summers for you. Oh, absolutely. I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes, you know, it's, it's, I get all so tired. Like some days are like 10 hours, 12 hours out there in the packs. And like we have to carry a shovel and a screen. Like every certain area, so we shovel test in the flat areas. But anything over 15 slope, we just, we don't bother. So, so that's uh, a lot of work anyways, yeah. How do you bring the dust back? Just in the plastic bags or something? We, yeah, we yeah, have uh, samples. Yeah, samples, like, uh, yeah, like, 
Yeah, bags. Yeah. Like we just put them, tie them up, and we, yeah. we write on it where we find it. Yeah. And we GPS uh, if we find something in that pit, and we, it's a positive. And if there's another there that's negative, we just bury that one. But we leave this one open. But we we map them out yes. after, and they all get put in the report. And you lug it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Is there uh, anything that you've found out on your walks that uh, was a surprise or anything memorable um, in your explorations that you'd want to share? Oh, well, like, uh, have you seen some of these things that I have on the table here, like all these, uh, like, like this here is a, a tomahawk head and uh, you can see how it's been worked there, and but the, that's how I found it. It was in uh, IR4 reserve there, going towards Darcy. That's we have a reserve, small fishing village site there, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, where this comes from. And, uh, and the reason why I've got a few of these is because a lot of these are ended up in the museums, and we don't have anything to show. So I want things you know people can see, or touch, and feel, and look at. And uh, I was at Long Point there one day there, and I was walking along the shore there, and this was like uh, five feet out in the water, and like five inches of water, just you know, right there looking at me. So I went out there and picked it up, but I flagged it out, you know, GPS the area, you know, and so it's all recorded and everything. You send the uh, information to the art branch, but uh, yeah, so that's where a lot of these come. And this is uh, these are basalt, the darker ones. Yeah. Are any of them this, uh, obsidian? Well, I have a couple of, shiny ones, yeah. these are obsidian, Yeah. and uh, these ones are like uh, homemade, like uh, just made for, uh, like in the last couple of years. Oh, okay. I made a really good one there, but uh, during our archaeology course there, and they, they gave us like 10 minutes to make an artifact. Wow. And uh, so I made one really quick there, and it was the best one out of the class, and he took it, and I like, ah, you know, <laughs> but, uh, they wanted to see if we still can do it. Yeah. And make and, them. And, and that's uh, that napping they yeah, call it? Yeah, napping, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, can that's you, a... Yeah, can you tell us what some of the other tools are? The hand tools there, uh, the rock, the yeah. stone? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, well, I, that was uh, obsidian I just showed you, and now this is a green chart. And uh, this is a broken point uh, that just comes from uh, Pemberton Creek here, just uh, right behind the uh, SLRD officer. And uh, crystal. And these uh, crystals, like these, are they're kind of used for drills. There's another drill here. See, our people didn't have uh, needles in the old days uh, to make holes in buckskins uh, like that. You know, these are used. Yeah. Drill holes, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this is uh, another type of chert there. And a lot of, like, most of these uh, smaller ones here, these points are very, some, you know, different sizes and they have big, small, they're for hunting, you know, birds, animals. Yeah, yeah, and uh, to uh, when the, when the people made the the points, they always you know like a, you you have your last name or something, you have a name, and our people always have different styles, so they recognize who made what. Like uh, that's how they recognized uh, if you know they killed the deer and you know, two of them were fighting over a deer, and they pull out the arrow and they stick at the pointer and. Yeah, it's mine. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so that's like a signature. Yeah. So yeah, so these are just like uh, rocks, you know, I mean, uh, they talk. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's, uh, this is probably one of the old, uh, it's broken, you can see it broke here, it was right in IR4, right in the road there, and people are driving over it all the time. There, and, uh, like back then, back in the 70s, even our own people were destroying sites there, and you know, it's, so like, but uh, they're there, you know, so I just keep picking them up there. And uh, yeah, these are stone hammers. Uh, me and my friend Ernie Tavarich, we, we still use these uh, stone hammers and bowls, 
and uh, we make, you know, like we'd sit there like till two or three o'clock in the morning making our smudge uh, out of cedar boughs, you know, the dry ones and sage and all that, and for our sweat lodge for the next day, and we'd, you know, be there just grinding away there. Yeah, that's, those are stone hammers. And this one here, uh, it comes from Walkerville too, at Reed Road Corner. It was just there and I picked it up and the way it's shaped, it's, you know, it's like a big gold ad there and uh, they used to have a, a piece of stick there tied to it, you know, but it's, it's an ads, a digging ads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this round rock, it's, it's been used. You can see the bottom part here, you know, it's been all chipped away. So that's one of the things they use for grinding up or hammering something. And uh, there's a few other stuff I have here. Like uh, there's some pretty rough stuff here. And you know, I'd really love to get a date for these. But I think this is uh, like where the thumb fits here. I think it's used like a knife or something because it was by an old fishing station there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a bunch of... Oh, and here's that conch I was telling you about. There's uh, the conch that the divers found. This is a small one there, but if you break it open, you see it all, how red it gets there. And so that's one of the Indian paints that our kids will use. Like, they mix it with bear grease. grease. Yeah. But nowadays you got all kinds of grease you can use. And uh, that, that was in old days, you know, bear grease was the uh, most important, or even a goat grease was uh, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is, uh, yeah. Well, see, when I go, I do uh, a lot of cultural stuff, like in the 2010 Olympics, uh, I've used this there, and, and uh, a lot of uh, things are very powerful, and they come from different people. and. There's the gear toes, there's the gear hoops. And I put the, there's my family clan, with the wolf clan there, and the grizzly bear clan on this side. And the claws are from which? The claws are from a bear. A friend gave me a, a bear, so I, and I took the key the and the bear. That's the toes from the gear, gear oh. hoops. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And there's the hummingbird and, and the letter is, yeah. Um, yeah, and there's a little story there, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in 2010 Olympics, I used this there and, uh, and I also like in my drums here, I've, I've been using a lot of the picture graph design so I can re-educate the people and people kind of like what I'm doing. And this here is, uh, resembles like the Tears of the earth, there's like a rainbow and the raindrops coming down there, and I spit fish and all the different describing the hunters, the animals that we use. <laughs>